you've now got a much more extensive suite of tools, haven't you, as central agencies, that you can use yep. across the sector, the four-year plans, we've got the PIF, the four-year excellence horizon in that. Oh, although, let me just challenge, challenge your wording on that one, Debbie. I would say a better set of tools that the sector can use to help itself. Yes that the central agencies happen to be the custodians of some processes around those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you see those tools working <coughs> together. What's the interplay across them? The four-year plans, the PIF, SEC's role in terms of chief executive performance management. Well, if you think about um, the four-year excellence horizon and the PIF, you'd expect to see that reflected both in um, an agency's four-year plan, the SOI, um, it should drive, for instance, uh, their approach to their people, the way they're going to manage the organisation. So there's, there's quite a connected um, story there. Um, I think the important thing, though, is often people see planning as a compliance exercise. And that's absolutely the wrong lens to be looking at it as. It's not a task for the finance people or your planners. It's actually a task for the executive team. And very, uh, absolutely, very much. If you have the, I mean, as one of our colleagues calls it, the strategic dialogue. If that's, yeah. if you have the strategic dialogue underway routinely, once in a while that can be crystallised and you can spit out a particular document, whether it's an SOI and a four-year plan or whether it's an internal document, yeah. whatever that is, the critical bit is actually that ongoing dialogue within the agency. Mm -hmm. um, the planning process shouldn't be the planning process. It should be a recording of where that planning, where that strategic dialogue has reached at a given moment. Yeah, it's dynamic. Yeah. yeah. And in that sense, if used well, it should be a process that helps you to periodically crystallise, challenge, articulate, and both demonstrate sort of improvement over the, over the past period and be very, very, provide very, very clear direction externally and internally about what the direction is over the next four years, what the, what the critical challenges are, what the critical ingredients of performance improvement you're working on. And which will then be linked right back to the chief executive and to be... Straight back into yes, the... Yes, it does. And hold the chief then. executive to account and to support the chief executive. Yeah, and I mean, ideally, the chief executive's expectations are linked to what they're expected to achieve both in terms of government priorities, their plan and so on. And um, what we would be looking for is them to then translate that to their second tiers as well, so that there's a, a cascading effect um, through the organisation in terms of that. The other thing I think the four-year plans are really um, useful for, or the exercise is useful for, is to challenge agencies in terms of working with other agencies and looking at the trade-offs that they've got to make around how they're going to work in the future. Because increasingly you can't achieve things just to, by being a single agency. The expectation is that you need to join up. Um, and well, the BPS goals force that. That's right. And also not only join up in a headspace, but join up and effectively in terms of frontline servicing and so on as well. And I mean, ideally, this uh, you asked us earlier, what, what are the central agencies doing together? In many ways, that ought to be, yeah. and I'm not sure it's one that we could say that we could say hand on heart that we are doing effectively yet. But actually, if anyone is positioned in the system to help agencies operate together, as it were, to break down the silos or to fill the gaps between silos to make that happen, actually, that's where the, the corporate centre should be playing that role. There's no one else positioned to do that. Mm -hmm.